Hi, my name is Ashley Shepard, and we're in my studio, Audio Grotto, uh, to do a tutorial today on how I use the iPads and the MC Mix to control Nuendo. Uh, I've had a lot of clients ask me what I'm doing with this setup and, and how it works, so I thought I'd put together this tutorial to show you in depth really how the system works and, and run it through its paces so you can see it in action. Okay, so first we're going to figure out how to get the iPads connected to your DAW computer. Now in this case, I have Nuendo set up on an OS X uh, Apple Mac Pro, uh, and that's this tutorial is going to be based on OS X. So the, the iPads use uh, wireless networking to communicate with the DAW. So you have to have a wireless network set up um, and connected to your DAW computer. Uh, once you do that, we need to use Apple um, audio MIDI setup to create a network port, a network MIDI port, so that the iPads can talk using MIDI commands to Nuendo. Now the way we do that is uh, opening up uh, the MIDI Studio window in audio MIDI setup, and you can see this network icon right here. This is where we can create the port itself. And you double click that and it opens the MIDI network setup. As you can see, I have a couple of ports already set up in here. One is for iPad Touch OSC, that's what we're going to use. The other one is for using MIDI timecode over the network. In any event, um, if you need to create a new port, you can use the plus button here and create your own dedicated Touch OSC port. Once that's done, um, you'll see the available devices in the directory here below. Now, my iPads are already showing up in here. You can see the 64 gig one and the other one over here. Um, the only time that they'll show up is once you've run Touch OSC on the iPad, then it'll show up in the directory. I've got Touch OSC running to the start page here, and now I can see them in the directory. So the way to add them is simply select the iPads and hit connect. And now they've popped up over here as participants in the MIDI network port. So now the iPads are speaking wirelessly over the network to the DAW computer, and we're halfway there. So once that's done, we can get out of Audio MIDI setup and go to Nuendo. Now, the way the iPads communicate with Nuendo is using a generic MIDI remote profile. So if you go to Devices and go to the Device Setup, you can see all the devices in my system. And I've created a generic remote up here. You can use this plus button to create one if you don't have one already. Then we have to connect the generic remote to the iPad MIDI port, and that's done up here. There's both an input and an output port. As you can see, I got a bunch of MIDI ports in my setup, but there's the network iPad Touch OSC port right there. So we use that for both the input and the output port. Now, both of the iPads are communicating with Nuendo using the network uh, MIDI port that we set up. So once you have the generic MIDI remote connected to the network MIDI ports for Touch OSC and Nuendo, you're ready to go. Now in my case, I've got all the templates set up. As you can see, I've got a full channel uh, window set up here. And let me just show you how this will work. So here's some channel settings right here. I can very easily just grab an equalizer and start dialing in some EQ settings if I want. Turning them on and off. I can do aux ends up and down. I can do all sorts of stuff. Um, and this is really customizable to your needs. I have it set up a certain way, but you can build this however you want to. I'm just here to show you sort of how to get started and get into it. Now, on the iPad, I have multiple screens. So this is a channel edit screen, but I can have, I can go to my edit screen where I can edit events and move things around and do all sorts of stuff there. I've got an automation screen when I'm mixing to access all the automation functions. I've even got this record screen. Now this one's sort of not really finished yet, but the basic idea is I can use this when I'm recording myself because the iPad is working wirelessly. I don't have to be sitting at my console. I can unplug the, the iPad like this, pick it up, take it with me, go out into the, uh, into the recording room and hit record on the iPad and I can be recording myself out there. It's one of the great things about the system is the ability to sort of remote control the setup. So, I'll take you through step by step 
to create one single control so you can get the idea of how flexible it is. We'll just take a look at the volume slider and how um, we can use uh, the Touch OSC app to control the volume of the channel. So in order to create uh, a volume control in Touch OSC, um, I'll start from a blank template, but here it is in, in my template already ready to go. I've got this MIDI slider right here. And if you take a look here, um, it is connected to MIDI channel 14 and controller number 22. And we gotta be specific about that. You gotta keep track of all your MIDI channels and control controller numbers for each control in the setup. So let me, let me show you how we do that from a blank template. If we start from a brand new template, you can make it sized for the iPhone if you want, or for the iPad. I'm going to go for the iPad size. Now I'm going to create a vertical fader. Boom. There we have a little vertical fader. Now you can size this however you want. You can make it big, small, wide, skinny. It's up to you, depending on uh, how you like to put your layout together. You can make it whatever size you want. You can even change the color and stuff. Now, with a volume slider, we want the minimum level, the starting out level, to be at the bottom, not at the top. And here's where you can use the inverted checkbox to start the slider down at the bottom. Now, I've got to turn on the MIDI over here by putting a checkbox by the X variable. Then we're given access to the channel and number right here. So I'm going to go to channel 14 and controller 22. There we go. Now, this is set up. Once I save this template and export it to the iPad over the network, um, then you'll have the same screen on the iPad with just one slider, and it will transmit controller data on MIDI channel 14 for controller number 22. Okay, so that much is done. Now, if we go to Nuendo, we're going to take a look at the generic remote setup again. Here it is. Um, I have a template already installed here with a lot of commands, but let, let's go to the volume, the volume line. Here it is. So there are two parts to the generic remote setup. There's the top window and the bottom window. The top window determines what MIDI channel and controller number data is coming in on. In this case, uh, volume is coming in on MIDI channel 14 and uh, channel number or controller number 22. Now, you can name each line a custom name, make it whatever you want uh, to keep track of things because this template can get kind of convoluted and complex once you go pretty deep in it. It's a controller type of control. Uh, continuous controller is what that means so that we have you know, a, a constantly variable sliding uh, control over the volume. Most controls uh, for Touch OSC are going to be a controller type, so those will be mostly the same. Over here to the right, we have the flags. And again, for most Touch OSC applications, it's going to be receive and transmit. Um, uh, depending on the control, there are some special ones that might uh, use the relative setting. But by and large, it's going to be receive and transmit. The next thing we have to take a look at is what part of Nuendo this control is going to address. And you have a couple of choices. We can address specific channel groups within the VST mixer, uh, going up to 64 channels. We can address the selected channel, which is what we're going to use in this case, the transport or the control room. Uh, most of my template address the uh, selected channel. So in, for, for this specific generic remote, we leave it on selected channel. Now, going down to the bottom window, the bottom window determines where this, what, what this data is going to affect in the window. So if I go and find the corresponding volume entry right here, um, we have several choices. First off is the device in the window that it's going to affect. Well, in this case, we're going to be affecting the VST mixer. Then the next choice is all these, you, every channel in the project is going to show up here. But in my case, I only want to address the selected channel because it can be different for every project. So I just want to address the selected channel. And then we are given choices, all the parameters we can address for that selected channel. All the inserts, all the aux ends, EQs, all kinds of stuff. 
the first entry is volume. So we have that selected. Now the flags, no flags in this case. Sometimes uh, for push buttons and other things, you, you'll use these flags, and it depends on the control. But in the case of volume, we don't need any of them selected. So now everything is set up. We can hit apply, OK, and we're ready to go. Now you can see when I slide the slider on the iPad, you can see the corresponding fader on the MC Mix is moving and the fader inside in the window is moving. They're all tied together. Now the great thing is, is how reactive this is. It moves pretty fast. Even though this is working over a wireless network, there is not an appreciable amount of delay between the time you move the control and you get the reaction inside the software. So also if I move the fader inside of Nuendo or here on the MC Mix, we see that the fader on the iPad shows us the relative position. This is part of the receive and transmit aspect of the generic MIDI remote. So it gives us feedback as to where we are. Okay, so now that you've seen one simple control being set up, you can get the idea of how we can get into doing a whole bunch of controls. You know, my template is, oh gosh, it's got hundreds of commands and and controls within it. I have the complete EQ section set up, all the aux ends are going, uh, automation controls. I have a whole page dedicated to editing, trimming events, nudging them, moving them around, and all that sort of stuff, zooming in, zooming out. I can even open and close windows like the automation panel, uh, the edit channel settings, and whatnot. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with this. So now uh, that you've seen sort of the basics and how it's set up, I can show you how I use it you know, just every day to do editing and mixing and writing automation and that sort of stuff um, in, in conjunction with the, the MC Mix controller. That's how I navigate around the project and select various channels to address with the iPad. So let me show you how I can use the iPad to do some basic editing functions. If I go over here and select this track here, and I've got an event, uh, my edit page is set up to trim and fade events that I have selected. So I can you know, put a fade in over here as I tap this button, I'm gradually incrementing the fade out of this event or the fade in. I can also trim both sides. And, th and the great thing about this is I'm, I'm able to do two things at once. I can be trimming and editing here while I'm moving an event over here. I can do lots of different things at once. I can be grabbing a fader here while I'm adjusting the position of this event. So I can do two things at once. And I think that's really where you get the benefit of using control surfaces is being able to do more than one thing at a time. With a mouse, you're simply stuck with one click, one fader, one control. You know, if I'm EQing something on the channel, I can quickly um, set up like a little low EQ and I can grab this and do some high end EQ at the same time real quickly. I can be addressing both at the same time. You can't do this with a mouse. It's a, it's a very different sensation. It's like working with a real console, except we're just using a low cost iPad as our touch screen and you create a custom template that works for you uh, the type of editing editing or mixing or whatever you do there's going to be commands that you use all the time that you can program into this iPad that'll make it easier to do your job so when I'm mixing basically the way I work is I use the MC mix to sort of find the channel that I want to work on by banking around and I can see the names of the channels. And when I touch a fader, boom, I have that channel selected. You can see it gets selected over here in the mixer. And if I have the edit channel settings window up, um, which is on the other screen there, um, I can see all the different parameters for that channel all at once. But yeah, I don't necessarily have to. Since I have the, the iPad, I can sort of do some EQ changes on the fly here and I can see what's going on up in the mixer. As I'm changing the EQ, I can address the aux sends if I need to, turn one on, raise or lower the level. If I had the sends up here, you could see me working there. You can see the aux end being adjusted as I adjust the slider down here. So I can bounce around real quick and get to the various channels 
in the mixer just by selecting them on the MC Mix. Then their settings pop up over here on the iPad. I can make a quick adjustment. I can put the track in automation record and record some automation, adjust aux ends, what have you. I can also, uh, using the automation panel, I can address really quickly what parameters I'm going to be automating. I can make sure I'm only automating volume if I don't want anything else to be written. Um, I can also address the features, uh, the other automation features like uh, recording automation to the end of the project, to the start, uh, using the advanced preview and touch assist modes. I mean, it's all right there. And instead of having to stop, use my mouse, click on a bunch of buttons, I can be rolling, uh, you know, have the project playing, get all this stuff set up, and enter uh, automation write mode on the fly. I don't have to constantly be mousing around and clicking a bunch of buttons. It's all right in front of me on the iPad. And with two of them, it's pretty unbeatable because I can do some editing over here and hit the automation mode over there and then grab a fader. It all sort of works together. And it, it just basically keeps me going instead of being constantly stalled and having to use the mouse to get things done. I can keep the session rolling, keep the vibe going, um, get to my controls as fast as I need to and not interrupt the session flow as, as we're working along there. And that's, that's basically how I work. And it keeps all my controls right in front of me and uh, keeps me from using the mice as much as, as I would if I didn't have these in front of me. Okay, so now you've sort of seen it in action and see how it works in, in my studio. Uh, hopefully this will give you some ideas to use this sort of technology in your studio, whether you've got an iPad or an iPad mini or even an iPhone, you can use Touch OSC uh, to work with Nuendo or Cubase and hopefully work a lot faster and more efficiently. So thanks again for watching. Uh, I'm Ashley Shepard and this is Audio Grotto and we'll see you next time on the next tutorial.